President Trump's attorney, Rudy Giuliani, stepping up his attack on Michael Cohen's credibility, calling him a, quote, pathological manipulator who cannot be believed. This comes two months after Rudy Giuliani said Cohen was an honest, honorable lawyer. Let's talk about all of this with Matt Schlapp. He's the chairman of the American Conservative Union and former political director for George W. Bush. Good morning, Matt. Good morning, Allison. How are you? I'm fine. So um, is Michael Cohen a confidant or a pathological liar? Well, it's a little strange to have someone you hired to do work for you tape you. So I think that raises all kinds of character questions. I think the other major question about Michael Cohen, is he really much of a lawyer or was he hired by Donald Trump to do a bunch of PR work? And if it was PR work, I think what Michael Cohen is engaged in now is a massive PR, uh, a PR campaign mm -hmm. to save his reputation. Or was he a fixer? <clears throat> I mean, the fixer, what we've heard, is, hold on, let me just explain what I mean by that, sure. which is that on the tapes that we've heard, he's setting up LLCs, he's trying to pay off a, a Playboy model, a, right. hush money. So that's, that's in the fixer department. Yeah, it's in the PR, working with media outlets to stop negative stories compartment. And well, I think no, really he, wasn't paying, he wasn't paying media outlets, he was paying the... Playboy model who said that she had an affair with Donald Trump. Well, I've listened to the tape and he talks about it in a slightly different way, but I agree that that's the ultimate intent. And basically, it seems to me, and I don't, I don't know him. I haven't been uh, ha had business dealings with Mr. Cohen, but it seems to me what he really is trying to do is squash bad stories and work on public relations for the president. Really, isn't a lawyer, and so now I think what he's engaged in is doing anything he can to make sure that his reputation is not destroyed and grows out of all this and probably becomes more famous. What does it say about Donald Trump that he had a pathological liar working with him closely for 10 I years? I think he's the most shocked person on the globe to find that this man was taping him. I mean, he was paying yeah, him, not just he was the, paying his bill. Taping. No, Allison, I mean, that's not a small thing. If you hire someone to do work for you and they're taping you in your office, that's outrageous. I would be pretty upset about it. I'd be shocked by it. I'm sure you would be too. Oh, it, it, that's one of the many stunning revelations yes. we've had. But how do you explain that Donald Trump, who prides himself on being able to assess humans, was duped somehow by a pathological liar for 10 years? It can happen. Can Clearly it? it can happen. I mean, Matt, can it? Yes. Have you been around somebody who has lied to you for yes, 10 years? I have. It's very painful when you find out that the person is not the person you thought they were and you hopefully in your life, uh, I turned 50 this year, Allison, so I officially turned old. Hopefully you can count those interactions only on one hand, but when you're involved at a high level in business or politics or anything yeah. else, you, know, you have these episodes and they're painful. Matt, I'd like to hear more about your backstory of who duped you for 10 years. That sounds fascinating, but for another day. Um, the president uh, continues to try to undermine Robert Mueller and now says, 14 months later, that he has conflicts of interest. What do you think those are? I think Bob Mueller, if there are conflicts of interest, I'd like to hear what they are. So would we. You know, I mean, the president has been vague. And just to let everybody know, there are there is a team of lawyers who vet these things. A, a special prosecutor isn't just appointed right. willy-nilly. There's a lot of vetting and research that goes into it. So the president just throwing out that obviously begs a lot of questions. And as you know, Rudy Giuliani, among uh, so many other people, have talked about um, you know, his unimpeachable credentials and how Robert Mueller has sterling credentials. And so it feels like the president is casting about for a new line of attack on him. Well, I think this. I think, uh, you know, if there are conflicts, I think everybody needs to know what they are. I think Bob Mueller uh, and his team or the lawyers at DOJ should, should simply say what they are. I think one of the problems... Or the problems president. I mean, who's the one who raised them? Oh, f fair enough. But in, and maybe that'll happen. And he really shouldn't be the one raising this at all. It, the fact is, is this, which is, you talked about a special counsel is not picked willy nilly. I really don't agree with that. Rod Rosenstein had the ability to really pick anybody he wanted. Yes, I assume they ran an ethics check. But remember, at the FBI, we were finding we found people and this is all part of this investigation and what Congress is asking from DOJ, people at the top levels of the FBI who had clear conflicts of interest mm -hmm. and they were still allowed to oversee investigations on President Trump. So the idea that the A American people are going to be calm, but the American people don't feel like the FBI and the DOJ have been handling these conflicts well. So I want to know what this conflict is. If there, is, if there was a business relationship between Bob Mueller and Donald Trump that somehow ended acrimoniously, I think that is a massive problem. Yes, but you're making a huge leap of logic. The president Am has I? been... Yeah. I mean... Am, what, you, don't know what they, you don't know what the facts are, though. You should wait to hear. I want to hear. 
Matt, this is the point. How can the president throw out a claim and not provide the facts? Well, he might. Matt, you're giving him a lot of latitude right now. You don't just stir the pot and throw out an inflammatory claim and hope that maybe the facts will filter out later. It is incumbent <laughs> upon you to provide the facts if you're going to make an inflammatory claim against someone. No offense, Allison, for the last 18 months, that has characterized this whole coverage and the investigation of these wild charges of collusion throw things out and hope to prove them later mm -hmm. donald trump's actually a victim of that and i think what i think the the american people would benefit from let's see all the facts if there are conflicts i think the doj should make clear what they are yeah and just to be clear you're conflating what is happening with some agents at the fbi with how a special counsel is chosen and they are different processes i don't believe that's right i think if you're going to go through i think there's a protocol by which you are picked to be an investigator of a high priority person and it should be very similar if there's any yeah. conflict at all if bob Mueller had any interactions with donald trump that ended acrimoniously i think that's very problematic for of his objectivity it is, and i'm telling you there's a team you agree with me on that but do you agree with me on that if they had an acrimonious of business course, relationship matt, of course all right good matt that's not the end of the story that we're, that's not like oh case closed there is a team of experts and legal analysts and lawyers and vetters who check into these things if they and if and and don't you think it would be good for the american people to eventually know what this is if there is something there <laughs> you keep saying if there is something there you don't like hypotheticals the president is throwing I think out a hypothetical there. and you're running with it Matt, i think there's something why there. don't you wait till the facts are presented i believe there's something there oh have me back on your show. It's interesting, Have, Matt. Yeah. I, you know, I, I think that it, these times call for us not just just run with our belief, not to just run with our hunch, but with a fact. A very fair point. I hope that in this investigation, what I'd like to see the DOJ do with all this 18 months of this investigation of potential collusion, which is ridiculous, is I think they should declassify documents, let people see everything. The American people in the end have to be the judge in all of this. Voters are going to have to decide in November and then again when Donald Trump runs for re-election what they think about all these matters. Yeah. And I'd like to see more information out there instead of less. Okay, we're working on that, Matt. You will keep it tuned to CNN. We are it's working on all, okay. Meanwhile, uh, Maria Butina, you know her. She's the alleged Russian operative. I don't know her. Do, uh, did you never meet her? Because she was trying to infiltrate CPAC, which you, feel, of course, organized. I feel like I'm an unimportant conservative leader because she didn't try to infiltrate me. Oh and uh, you know, there is a, there was, a, we did check our records and apparently she bought one general mission ticket to CPAC one year. Uh, if I met her, I certainly don't recall. I never had any interaction or any projects with her, and uh -huh. uh, she seems like a very problematic person. Yeah. There's a court affidavit that cites her efforts to infiltrate the NRA, and it mentions CPAC. It reads, quote, yes. central place and influence in the political party, number one, plays the gun rights organization. The gun rights organization is the largest sponsor of the elections to the U.S. Congress. I think they're referring to the NRA, by the way, Matt, as right. well as a co-sponsor of the CPAC conference and other events. So my point is she was trying to make inroads. Yes. Um, I understand that you don't find her memorable, but are you concerned about what's going to happen in the midterms? Do you think that the Trump administration has taken enough measures to stop Russian infiltration? I think it's a very tough thing to try to stop. I think it's a big mistake that Obama didn't try to stop it and that Russia has had this influence in our society okay. and our elections for a long and time. So what's and so the Trump administration I doing? believe that Mike Pompeo and Jeff Sessions and, and John Bolton and the team around Donald Trump uh, are going to do everything they can to make sure the Russians don't have an impact in our elections. But let's also be candid. Um, and, I, and, and, and if I need to even give... Barack Obama compliment on this and the secretaries of state across the state from 2016, they never got into our voting systems and they never really affected one vote. What they did is they tried to create chaos in our society. And after 18 months of this investigation, you have to give mm -hmm. them some high marks for creating that chaos. Um, sorry, I couldn't hear the last thing that you said. Because I, I, would give the, I would give Putin's government high marks for creating chaos if you look at the fact that it's resulted in a special counsel and the fact that we're all still talking about <laughs> Wait a second. potential Russian collusion. That's the part that you think was most chaotic? The fact that a special counsel? Yes. Was you? Yes, I think what's most chaotic about Matt? Russia is he has, I think the Russian government tries to sow chaos. Matt, if you look at the special counsel is what you object to the most, not everything that happened with Facebook, not all of the fake so news, let's look at not this. all of the fictitious accounts, not all of the yes. sowing discord. I have a problem with all of it. Let's look at 
what they did. Let's look at the money they spent. Half of the money Russia spent on the elections to try to create that chaos occurred after Election Day. A lot of the spending occurred in blue states. So it wasn't the spending wasn't just you? to help so Donald I guess Trump. The, the administration this hasn't is, cracked down but on these that. are but these are facts. Some of the things they did were to create chaos both for Clinton and for Trump. They, their desire is to destabilize the American democracy. That's the problem. You heard what Vladimir Putin said. He wanted Donald Trump to win. There you go. I uh, mean, that I, could I, be the bottom line. Then why was his spending done in such a way where it also helped mm -hmm. Clinton in blue states and, like I said, Doesn't was spent to like try that to that destabilize both show. campaigns? But either way, Matt, we're out of time. Uh, thank okay. you, Matt Schlapp, for talking you, about Allison. all of this and giving us the perspective from the Trump camp.